so sorry. Hello and a very warm welcome to today's session brought to you by Team Grade Up. I hope you all are doing really well. Through the course of this lecture, we will of course continue our discussion on the Romantic Age. We've already introduced the Romantic Age. We've also spoken about the most important uh, sage of Cockermouth, that's William Wordsworth. We've started a discussion on him yesterday. We practiced a couple of questions in a little longer than an hour long session. And we will of course continue from there itself. Always remember whenever we are talking about the Romantic Age, there are certain important writers that come often, right? For example, you will get questions on the Gothic literature that is emerging during the time. You get questions from Jane Austen and Walter Scott, who are important novelists of the period. You get uh, questions that come in your exam, which are related to uh, your important development of prose writings. Because, you know, we often ignore prose writings. But when we are talking about Thomas de Quincey, all his essays have been asked in your entrances. William Hazlitt. Charles Lamb, Mary Lamb, the bodlerized version of Shakespeare's work. So remember, uh, Charles and Mary Lamb are known for Tales of Shakespeare, which is a very important work, right? So we will, of course, continue with our entire discussion that we were doing uh, regarding the Romantic period over here in this particular session. And of course, we've got a very short quiz lined up for all of you. So let's just very, very quickly get started with today's session. And here, like I said, we'll, of course, continue with our discussion. But do keep in mind some points that we've already spoken about romanticism has got so there is this person called fl lucas so there is this person called F. F. L. lucas he has given that you know there are approximately more than eleven thousand three hundred and ninety six definitions of romanticism and this is the same romanticism that is first emerging from your romances but then skegel is giving it a new turn by calling it the romantic era which is trying to fight against the artificiality of the neoclassical period which was paying a lot of attention to detail decorum so always you'll see that literature especially the movements in literature are responding to the previous trends they are either uh, revolting against the previous trend or they are trying to continue the trend that was posed by the previous movements so here we can see that there is an antipathy towards the neoclassical way of representing people are not liking those strict boundaries of the neoclassical period and that is the reason you're having a new age that is inaugurated completely roughly the time zones that we are talking about is 1798 with the publication of the lyrical ballet to the time of your july revolution or to the time of your first reform bill that is coming which is actually technically starting the victorian period and in multiple books you will also find this as 1837 that is approximately the period of accession of queen victoria as well as so there is a proper regime change that has taken place as well as that is the period which is associated closely with Chartism and it is representing the new ethos altogether. So do keep that in mind. And you know, majority of the romantic poets had also passed away by this time. So you see that majority of the romantic poets who were associated with the trend of romanticism, they had completely passed away uh, by that time. Only Wordsworth was surpassing and Wordsworth, of course, lives a little longer till 1850. And you know, there's a question that comes in your exam often that what is the most productive period of Wordsworth? So Wordsworth was very popular. He was very, very popular during the 18th, 30s to 40s at Cambridge and this is when his reputation after that started uh, like you know declining but Matthew Arnold supported him Matthew Arnold praised him Matthew Arnold said that you know he is a poet at par with Milton he is a poet at par with the luminaries that we have in English literature and rightfully so right now we discuss William Wordsworth at par with Chaucer, Shakespeare
Shakespeare, Milton and other important writers are associated with literature. So that is, of course, important. Uh, we will, of course, be having a very short, brief quiz that is lined up for today. And at the same time, we'll, of course, look at William Wordsworth as well as we will continue with our discussion of romantic period. Uh, tomorrow, of course, we will look at very important literature that is coming, for example, your Gothic literature from where you get direct questions, your novel writers such as Walter Scott and Jane Austen from where you get direct questions. Uh, and of course, uh, you know, in the later parts, we've got uh, classes scheduled for your other romantic poets also. And of course, in terms of announcements, we are having uh, 14th and 15th of February. We will be uh, devoting it dedicated, dedicatedly to your marathon sessions. Your 10 p.m. series will also start next week and your library will be active. Your library will be active Sunday, Monday onwards. Okay, so 14th, 15th onwards, your library for all the classroom students will be active on 14th, 15th of February. And your 10 p.m. sessions will also be starting uh, by the next week. So hopefully by 15th, 16th, your 10 p.m. sessions regularly will keep on starting. Then, you know, you can have a proper routine that okay you're joining these classes you're attending these classes and you're just noting down the notes in a proper fashion and then just revising the notes then it's a little less stressful for all of you then you just have to take out some time to do your paper one so uh, that is what we're coming up with okay let's just very quickly see how many of you have joined there's Divya there's Manisha there's Rupa there's Zainab there's Raksha there's Jyoti there's Hetal Sushil good evening Jyoti there's Sushmita uh, Sushmita the library is starting 14th 15th on words 14 15 the library will be active okay and the 10 p.m sessions should start 15 16 onwards 15 16 onwards okay hi mamta hi akarshan hi zishan hi sana good evening <clears throat> No worries, Gurpreet. That's what I was wondering. I was just wondering that, you know, I hope your family problems are sorted, Gurpreet. And don't worry too much about it. Just focus on your academics and be very happy and just take care of yourself and your family. Okay. Uh, hi, Suhu. Hi, Seema. Hi, Jotsna. There's Jotsna. Uh, there is Gurpreet, there is Firdos Ahmad, uh, Seema Khan. Literally, good evening. There's Deep Chani. Uh, yeah, yeah, you can. Devchani, you can. All right. Uh, but I would suggest that now, whatever books you're choosing, just stick to those books. And uh, like, you know, one of the sessions that we're having on the 15th, I will share the schedule also with all of you, is pertaining to how you can retain things, how you can retain things. Okay. Uh, now, one very quick thing. Uh, there have been people like Madhuri on the classroom platform. Let's see from the classroom platform how many of you have joined us over here. Uh, very, very quickly. Let's just see. There's Rachna, there's Pooja, there's Niranjana, there's Sushmita, there's Sushila, uh, there's Sahila, sorry, there's Abhi, there's Kuhu, uh, Mrs. Karuna has also joined, there's Anubha, Padmasa, Sushmita, uh, there's Sabha, thank you Sabha for asking, there's Navika, Pratibha, Sangeeta, Nargis, uh, there is Yogesh, I'm doing good, thank you so much, uh, there's Vandana, there's Poonam, there's Anki, Payal, Preeti, uh, yes, of course, uh, Preeti, we are coming on. That is the reason. So what we'll do then is that in the 7 p.m. sessions, we'll start practicing a lot of things. And in the 10 p.m. sessions, then we can do a lot of theory. So that is how we are uh, calculating the things. So don't worry. There will be a lot of practice and there'll be focused practice. For example, we will be practicing on a daily basis on a particular topic. So that way your practice will also be done on the platform. And you can also revise theory with all of us. That is the main agenda. That is how we are bifurcating the 7 p.m. sessions. And the 10 p.m. sessions because I hope all of you can calculate that you know by the time we complete the, pr the practice of the questions the time gets over so that is how we are planning that is how grade up is planning the stuff that you know at 7 p.m. we can do a lot of practice and that too rigorous practice of a structured focused manner so you know we can do a paper on a daily basis or we can do like a proper selection so that it's easier for all of you so don't worry about it we will be pretty adding more questions okay there's Anand there's Sukirti there's Moon Moon there is Saloni there uh, um, Anand, thank you so much for asking. I'm doing good. There's Savitri. Savitri, Bache, uh, I'm glad that you've started joining. Keep on continuing at least to join the 7 and 10 p.m. session uh, so that if you are having any problems, like, you know, you were discussing about Milton, uh, sorry, John Dunn, so you can discuss it via these platforms also, okay? Savitri was a part of our first grade up batch that we were having in the month of October, November. So, Savitri, please join at the 7 and 10 p.m. for sure, okay? Okay. Uh, <clears throat> Yes, Kuhu. From next week onwards, there will be two classes. Okay. Uh, 
Yeah, uh, Chandranima, uh, Bache, the library will be open 15th, 16th onwards. The li oh, sorry, the library is starting 14th, 15th onwards, and the 10 p.m. session is starting 15th, 16th onwards. Okay, so that is what we are doing. All right, Madhuri, uh, of course, is not a complete focus class on gate, but yes, very, very quickly, there are some students who are writing their gate exams. Let me just tell you that don't worry too much. Okay, A, this is an inaugural version. Whatever you have studied, if you've studied properly, three things were very important your British literature, your Indian writings, as well as your theory. These three things, if you've covered properly, you don't have to worry at all. And especially if you were looking at the previous year's questions, I don't really think you will struggle at all. Now, if you all have seen the mock test paper, I would request all of you to just definitely take a look at that mock test question paper. You will see that around 10 plus questions, 10 plus questions have been incorporated from British writers and Indian writers. So if you look at the gate mock test that they've given on the website, let me just see if I can pull that up right away. So the gate, gate mock test that they have given to you on the platform, if you open that, you will be able to see, you will be able to notice that, you know, there are, there are over 10 plus questions that are coming from British writers. There are 10 plus questions that are coming from British writers as well as from Indian writers. All right. So there are approximately over, uh, like, you know, somewhere close to about 14 to 16 questions from British writers and Indian writers also they've given you more than 10 questions uh, I did not calculate it exactly but there were more than 10 questions that they had given you so that means all of you who are giving your gate exams these two domains start revising it and that is the reason I keep on telling all of you just compile your notes at one place because during this time it becomes easier because right now you can't afford to like you know uh, refer to uh, your Oxford companion refer to your Cambridge companions refer to your penguin edition you can't do that you need one particular book access all right you need one particular place where you can access all these things so you should definitely go through this and then you will be able to see that you know they've given you questions related to american writings also so there were approximately over two to three questions that they had given you on american literature so that means you don't have to worry too much but they were also like you know afro-american writers like morrison there was a question on morrison that they had asked in the sample paper there were also questions that had come from your post-colonial writing so there were like you know two questions that had come from your post-colonial writings uh, so clearly you can see that you know they're not giving a lot of attention to your other world literature writers but British and Indian writers are very crucial British and Indian writers are extremely crucial right now that is what you have to remember and uh, you know approximately other world writings also they have given you approximately say about two to three questions so you can see that you know from world literature they've barely given you approximately six questions um, so clearly literature is very bulky they have literally formulated over 40 questions from literature and when you're talking about criticism when you're talking about literary criticism and theory they've given you approximately six to eight questions there all right so uh, of course this is also something that you should actually remember and revise so whenever you are talking about the analysis of the gate paper right now, because you're just two days away uh, from your gate exam, what I would recommend you is just don't worry at all. If you have prepared, if you have made notes, just revise those notes, especially British literature and Indian writing notes. If you have not revised anything, don't worry at all. Just attempt some previous year's questions, uh, particularly attempt questions like, you know, there are these booklets or there are online papers available from 2008 to 2015 questions try and attempt those the, that will be by and large the pattern of your paper that gate exam will be gauging okay so just look at those questions briefly don't panic at all at this juncture I would suggest that you know because you're just two days away rather than getting worried just be very confident watch a lot of videos that is what you can do hear a little bit of audios take a piece of paper and the last two to three days whatever you are revising just pen it down okay with a cool calm composed manner just make sure that you're focusing on this paper and you will be sorted okay so there is no need to worry at all there is no need to worry that you, you have to worry uh shilpa we will let you know we will let you know about the next gate update by the time we had started with the classes the gate form was already closed so by the time we had started with our classes over here the gate form was closed that's the reason i couldn't insist but right now also you people are having Odisha lecturer exam which is active you can apply for that your ksat exam is valid your net exam is going on this 
uh, the application submission please submit those okay so don't worry just focus on your british writers just focus on your indian writers just focus on literary criticism that's about it if you have not studied anything that is okay just go online watch your classes there are some classes that we've also conducted or you can even come and see whether on on the grade up classroom platform you can access those uh, videos <clears throat> just go over those but don't panic trust me don't panic at all give your paper with a very cool heart cool head <clears throat> and you you'll surely do it really well okay so good luck to all the aspirants who are giving the gate paper i can see madhuri definitely was giving the paper so madhuri do keep that in mind that right now for the next two days your main key focus area should be british writers indian writers and literary criticism and this will also really help you because for your net now you will be prepared that you have to compile your notes properly now for your net you will be prepared that you have to compile your notes really well okay so do remember that all right so do remember that that is important uh, that will be very very crucial uh, sushmita is asking um, exactly sushmita that is the reason from next uh, week onwards what we'll do yes 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 who's this sri lankan writers and the little writers who had written this uh, uh, yeah yeah sri lanka you can you can you can of course go through all these writers you can certainly go over it and you know what i would recommend uh, just go online uh, even though they don't give the paper but just try and see and if you can get access to the past 5 year pu phd entrance paper if you can get an access to punjab university the punjab official university uh, there are two universities punjab university and punjabi university not punjabi but punjab university chandigarh if you can get the 5 years previous years questions i will also try to see if i can get an access to just practice is those that will be the pattern of your gate exam that will exactly be how your gate exam will be coming okay so just take a look at that that will really help you so just go online and see or like you know connect with your friends if they are having because you know in pu they don't let you take the question papers outside um so that is the reason none of uh, none of the people are able to get the question papers but those papers are very helpful that will be by and large the pattern of the paper okay yes preeti will take a class on canterbury tales also don't worry now we'll keep on doing everything in a very structured manner so you don't have to worry now you just have to come sit with a notepad from next week onwards that's about it okay all your worries have been taken by all of us okay let's quickly start on that note with a quiz question for today the first quiz question is who has written the essay the old benchers of the inner temple the old benchers of the inner temple the old benchers of the inner temple uh jyoti uh, see bache when you are talking about pgt exams even pgt exams are very very different for example i'll give you the example of kendra vidyalayas kendra vidyalayas last time for their pgt entrances did not make it very literature heavy all right they did not make it very literature heavy there was a very common paper that had come this is before the lockdown that the kendra vidyalaya paper that had taken place so you know there are multiple categories of pgt exam pgt exam it looks very simple that it's post graduate teacher but you're having army public schools pgt exams you're having kendra vidyalaya pgt exams you're having state specific pgt exams like up pgt exams uh, so you have to be prepared accordingly the pattern of the paper uh, changes but by and large there are some authors which are very common okay jyoti do remember that excellent very good let's let's look at the answers at the classroom platform also how many students have answered it correctly payal has given the right answer okay um uh, uh madhuri is asking what should i do on the date of the exam uh, should i read anything or should i not read anything see uh, you know this is something which is very very individualistic uh, uh, take for example like you know I, when when I, i i'll give you my example so i am that sort of a person who even till the last minute who's like you know when you're getting inside the examination hall will keep on revising that is because you know i usually compile my stuff what i have to revise in a structured manner like i i have one thing when i'm studying i i compile things in that order but you know for exams i always i i usually don't make notes but i just color my books a lot but personally for exams i always make these sheets of papers wherein i'm writing because those i have to revise before the paper but whereas my brother he will um, he will not at all revise right so i think that is very individually dependent but i would recommend anything that makes you remain cool 
so if for example if i'm not revising those notes i will not be cool i will not be cool headed so it completely depends upon what will make your mind just have a lower stress level and your energy level should be very high trust me i have seen students who have gone wrong with the questions that they could have got right just because they were fatigued just because they were tired so never tire yourself before the paper just go with a very fresh mind so if you think that you know studying on the day of the exam will make you fresh then study but if you think that will stress you out out madhuri then don't study okay so don't don't completely worry about it all right yes 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 of course of course karuna we are all getting charged up so march april we will not let you sleep neither are we sleeping and that is the reason we are already trying to build this habit in all of you in the month of uh february itself so that you know your march so your march and april you know that's 7 pm and 10 pm we have to sit for the classroom students 3 pm 7 pm 8 pm and 10 pm you have to sit so you know those are important things okay so here what you have to keep in mind here what you have to keep in mind uh that Right. Here, yeah, what you have to keep in mind is that inner temple is the place where Charles Lamp is going. Inner temple is the place where Charles Lamp is going, and Charles Lamp is actually writing the old benches of the inner temple, the old benches of the inner temple. Charles Lamp was a friend of Coleridge. Also, he met Coleridge at school itself. And when you're talking about the inner temple, the inner temple, a place. This is an essay that he's writing. Okay, the old benches of the inner temple has been written by Lamp. Lamp is also writing poetry, but is much more popular for his prose writing. things and he's never getting married because of the fact that you know he is having a lot of emotional trauma a lot of problems that are there okay so do remember that pleasure swati we just want your results okay the more number of you produce your net certificates the more happier we are so we just want the results and i'm sure if all of you are positive and if you are working hard and if you have a good intention you are all sorted don't worry at all okay so always uh, i i know that um, a lot of you who study literature are agnostic and atheistic but do trust there is a super power watching you if you're working hard good intention you will definitely clear it okay so don't worry okay our birth is but a sleep and forgetting the soul that rises with us our life star hath had elsewhere its setting very beautiful lines our birth is but a sleep and forgetting the soul that rises with us our life star hath had else where it's setting this is clearly telling you that you know uh, our life is very very ordinary we'll all become dust one day but the fact that you know the soul is having the soul is having its its ha- its home elsewhere so our birth is but a deep sleep and forgetting but a sleep and forgetting excellent excellent see even if you are not aware about it you can make from the lines that you know the lines are actually talking about eternal eternal uh, how the the soul is eternal how the soul is having an infinite lifetime mortal is existence uh, existence is finite but the soul is infinite right the soul is infinite the soul is everlasting it is something that cannot be uh, like you know cannot die at all so from the above you know you can even see that immortality immortality is mentioned so this is the ode to immortality and as it is majority of the most important lines they give you from tintern abbey or immortality ode So it is always a good idea to read it once. You know, you can just in your free time read the, the two poems once, and you will always get the right answer. This is a very beautiful line, very commonly asked, very very commonly asked in your exams. Nature never did betray the heart that loved her. These lines exist in nature. Never did betray the heart that loved her. Okay, so nature never did betray the heart that loved her. Who has written this? Nature never did betray the heart that loved her. These lines are coming from which work? I have already given the answer. Let's see at the classroom level because remember I gave you a hint. Either this poem or that poem. That is where you get the answers from. Excellent. Anki, Sushmita, Vandana, Madhuri, Navika. Navika very good going. Navika is answering well. Very good. Rabia, Jimin, uh, Anand, Geeta, Kushbu. Fantastic. fantastic very good very good that is the right answer some of you are answering one uh, but see uh, here nature never did betray the heart that loved her uh, when you are talking about the welsh countryside the welsh countryside has been spoken about in the tintern abbey so tintern abbey is more concerned about themes of nature nature loving how nature is an inspiration you know the poet is thinking that his soul has got corrupted but nature is bringing him back to the right path nature is responsible 
responsible for bringing him back to the right path. Nature instills in him the old qualities, so to say. So when you're talking over here, what you have to remember is that if you look at this work, nature never did betray the heart that loved her. He's talking about the spirit of pantheism. Pantheism is in Tintern Abbey. Immortality Ode is a little more philosophical. Now, this is exactly what Coleridge will say. Coleridge will say, okay, fine. You say, use common man's language. Where have you used common man's language? Where have you used common themes? You know, they're not very ordinary themes that you're talking about. These are poetic themes that you're discussing. Okay, it has become hot in Delhi now. Okay, uh, so so here, this is something that you have to remember. So Tintern Abbey becomes the right answer here, right? Tintern Abbey is the right answer. Just in your mind, just have this, that Tintern Abbey is having more natural insights. Nature is, of course, there. You know, they are nature-loving poets. Nature is obviously respected. But that is more, like, you know, towards nature, whereas immortality is a little more towards life's aspects, okay? Who, considers, who considered Wordsworth as the high priest? priest of nature high priest of nature according to which critic uh, like you know wordsworth was a high priest of nature so when you're talking about wordsworth as being the high priest of nature according to which critic is the high priest of nature and also tell me who has called whom a damaged arch angle okay arch angle a damaged so when you're talking about a damaged arch angel arch angel who has used this for whom who has used this for whom who has called uh, like you know this very famous poet damaged archangel so who has used this term and for whom and for whom okay so this is also important uh, that is also very crucial excellent some of you have answered it correctly but she high priest of nature now when you're talking about high priest very good jyoti has got it right jyoti has got it right but she high priest of nature usko de quincy keh rahe hain right wordsworth ko high priest of nature kon keh raha hai wordsworth ko high priest of nature de quincy saying and de quincy is very important why de quincy so here nargis has answered it correctly on the classroom platform uh, nargis has answered this question correctly uh, sorry uh, who else has answered this question correctly One बहुत ही कम राबिया इज आंसर इट करेक्टली वेरी गुड वेरी गुड आई थिंक बोथ मोस्ट ऑफ यू गॉट कंफ्यूज बिकॉज येस्टडे वी सेट दैट आर्नल्ड इज प्रेजिंग इज हाई मॉरलिटी सो आई गिव यू मार्क्स आई गिव यू मार्क्स यू आर पेइंग अटेंशन इन द लेक्चर बट बच्चे प्लीज रिमेंबर हियर वेन यू आर टॉकिंग अबाउट वेरी गुड रूपा वेरी गुड राइट हियर वेन यू आर टॉकिंग अबाउट द हाई प्रीस्ट ऑफ नेचर द इंटायर कॉन्सेप्ट दैट यू नो वेन एवर यू आर टॉकिंग अबाउट वेन एवर यू आर डिस्कसिंग अबाउट विलियम वर्ड्सवर्थ राइट विलियम वर्ड्सवर्थ इज द हाई प्रीस्ट ऑफ नेचर and this is a very this is a very common phrase that has been used for him uh, so a lot of people are actually calling him uh, as an important person but then de quincy is the person who's using this in his criticism right uh, he is using this in his criticism so that is the reason you have to keep that in mind all right thomas de quincy as it is is very important why de quincy is important because de quincy is the person who's writing like you know murder is one of the fine arts murder is one of the fine arts that you are having. Having. he is also writing on knocking at the door of macbeth how the the act completely changes the act completely changes the entire play's dynamics so those are of course important aspects that you have to keep in mind now here what you have to remember is that even coleridge even coleridge actually addresses even coleridge actually calls him but first person to use this phrase was de quincy so de quincy was calling him okay yes 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 absolutely absolutely so de quincy is called de quincy is popularizing it and that is the reason later even coleridge later even coleridge is actually using this term so you know these kind of questions are a little confusing and you know multiple times in your net for example you can even contest these kind of questions that is the reason i keep on asking you to like you know refer to standard books so if you are referring to standard books and if you show them that see this is a publication wherein it is like you know one of the suggested publications by Uh, even the government colleges professors and here this is what is mentioned so these are contested questions and that is where you know sometimes like if it's too uh, ambiguous then what do they do they skip this question if they skip this question then you know there are two alternatives if anyone is marked they will get the right answer or if no one has marked uh, like you know they've just skipped it only they've skipped this question completely so this th that's the reason you will see multiple of these kind of questions coming but the first person to use it was uh <clears throat> 
yeah so who uh, what is your doubt and damaged archangel is lamp telling about cold ridge right lamp charles lamp is telling this about cold ridge Ta charles lamp is saying this about cold ridge because charles lamp is very well connected with cold ridge he had seen and he genuinely thought that cold ridge had a lot of potential and he didn't really complete that how many parts are there in the prelude so when you're talking about the prelude how many parts are there in the prelude this is very important question okay Yes, 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 Akarshan. Quincy was a critic. Thomas de Quincy was a critic. Thomas de Quincy was a person who was a critic. And Thomas de Quincy is a person who is writing some of the most important romantic prose writings, right? Some of the most important uh, prose writings are there. Thomas de Quincy is labeling. Thomas de Quincy, uh, Rahul, is labeling uh, Wordsworth as a high priest of nature, which is again being used by people like Coleridge as well. Okay? So that is important. Okay. Excellent. Excellent. <clears throat> All right. Now here, what you have to remember is how many parts are there in the prelude? How many parts are there in the prelude? Now, when you're talking about the parts of prelude, we've already discussed this question yesterday that there are 14 parts of prelude. Prelude is a spiritual autobiography. It is the growth of the poet's mind. The, the subtitle is the growth of the poet's mind. It is getting published by his wife in 1850, even though he had this intention of making sure that, you know, he was incorporating more parts, right? Now, what you can see over here is that this is an autobiographical work which was written in blank words okay this is also a question that you where is my pen gone uh, this is also a question that you get that this work was written in blank words okay this work was written in blank words this is a point that you have to remember and this is having 14 parts now what are some of the most important 14 parts that you are having you have the introduction okay you are having the introduction you are having the school time we'll discuss all these in greater details there is no need for you to worry about it because this is an important and you get questions okay then the third book is talking about residence in cambridge now why is this important because they have given you a direct question in your net exam that which among the following universities has been mentioned in the prelude so if you ha would have known about the 14 parts you could have immediately recollected that cambridge is the university that has been spoken about cambridge is the university that has been spoken about okay then they are talking about where is my pen going yeah then they're talking about the summer vacation i will also tell you the trick how you can remember all the parts so be it walden be it prelude these are certain things that you know if you have then there's obviously a discussion uh, in the later books which is dealing with uh, a proper knowledge about various kinds of books that they're reading cambridge and the alps is the next one right you're having oh, oh, sorry here right you're having cambridge and the alps so cambridge is being discussed cambridge and the alps so you know if your knowledge about the writer is there you would be able to solve the question even if you were not aware about it even if you wouldn't have read prelude but still you can answer these kind of questions so net is actually very simple it's asking you very uh simple questions and that is the reason you know do this experiment just uh take out a net paper and just type the question if the minute you will type the question i, I don't mean type the entire question just type some parts of the questions you will be able to get the answer in the first few parts only so net is not asking you something which is very like you know gravely in depth that is like that will just be for some questions not for all of them so your main target has to be to just increase the breadth of your knowledge don't go into the depth part so much of course know a little about the depth of some writers but not all of them okay so that is of course very very important then he's also talking about residence in london so you know there are multiple books that are there residence in london cambridge life so all of these are being described consistently in the 14 parts his residence in france everything that has taken place everything that has taken place in his life is getting discussed over here okay Okay. <clears throat> Blank verse Akarshan is a form of writing which is using iambic pentameter. <coughs> Sorry. So when you're using iambic pentameter, that is what is called your blank verse. Okay. In which year was the prelude published? I hope all of you can answer this question. Uh, we will not spend a lot of time discussing this. 1850 was the year in which prelude was published. 1850 was the year when it got published. And this was published by his wife. This work was published by his wife. Okay. 
who is a writer of descriptive scratches and who has written R Ruth. We wouldn't even spend a lot of time discussing this because yesterday only in the lecture, if you would have gone through the PDF that I had given you, you would have at least seen descriptive sketches is being written by William Wordsworth. Descriptive sketches has been written by William Wordsworth and even Ruth is getting written by Wordsworth. So we'll not spend a lot of time. Now here, this is an important question. Wordsworth has expressed his views on transmigration of the soul in his poem. The transmigration of the soul, when you're talking about the concept of transmigration of the soul, in which work is Wordsworth talking about this aspect? In which work, work is he talking about the transmigration of the soul? Which work is he talking about the transmigration of the soul? Now remember the hint that I had given you. The hint that I had given you at the beginning of the video, just remember that. Okay, now most of you, are, why Basit is writing one, why, why are you writing one? I had given you the hint. What did I say? I told you the minute you see the term soul, the minute you t see the term soul, maximum number of times, what will be the correct answer? Maximum number of times, what will be the correct answer if there is an indication to the soul? So if you, we are talking about the soul, what is the right answer in majority of these cases, right? When we are talking about the soul, what is the majority of times that we're talking about? Right. So please remember Ode on the Imitations of the uh, Intimations of the Immortality or which is also called the Immortality Ode is actually talking about the transmigration of the soul. Transmigration is basically a very important philosophy that is even being used by psychoana psychoanalysts later on that you know there was this condition that if I'm a psychologist and if people are coming with their problems to me I might get uh, like you know equally frustrated like them. I might like you know get there there and this this in psycho psychology is called transference. This in psychology is called transference. Remember why our parents used to forbid us don't go with that uh, like you know that bad girl or bad boy uh, because you know he or she can spoil you. There there is an element of transference that we have always believed as a human society, and that is something that you know he's of course giving a different name and also transmigration is ultimately the migration of the soul. The migration of the soul to its proper place the migration of the soul to its proper place and we should not destroy the soul and we should not destroy the soul because of our human tendencies we must not destroy the soul because of our human tendencies that is also an aspect that is there and like i said majority of time as a hint also most of the times the discussion on the soul is revolving around ode or the immortality ode immortality ode is talking about that okay who has written peter bell who has written peter bell so who is a writer who's famously written the Peter Bell and after this what we'll do is after this we'll quickly go on to Wordsworth we'll discuss the remaining questions in a bit so that we are at least able to cover a lot of things okay <clears throat> hi Rajan all right what is the right answer here very very simple this, this question is pretty simple it's a very long narrative poem Peter Bell this long narrative poem has been written by whom it was published in 1798 who is the writer who's writing this fantastic fantastic very good very good. Right. So uh, William Wordsworth is writing this long narrative poem. This is a long narrative poem that has been written by William Wordsworth. Uh, and this particular poem was published as early as 1798. Okay, so it was it was uh, like it was written uh, pretty early in his career. It was written pretty early and then it later got published also. Okay, uh, it got published around 1819 and it was written around 1798. So majority of works are getting written early period also. Okay, uh, this is a very, very simple question but we are not uh, discussing this question let's very quickly come on to your wordsworth without further ado and then continue so so far we have spoken about the initial part of wordsworth we've spoken about his life we've spoken about the lost leader we've spoken about his journey to france how he was sympathetic to the cause of the revolution and therefore he is categorized as the first generation romantics but by ad accepting to the poet laureate ship in 1843 he was clearly abandoning the cause cause of uh, the cause of a rebellion so to say okay now when you're talking about Wordsworth you need to know that you know he's also writing play for example he's writing borders these are questions that come directly he's writing Tintern Abbey he's writing multiple other poems that are 
asked in your exams you should also know what is this concept of poetry because a lot of times you get questions related to wordsworth's criticism uh, so wordsworth criticism is basically his formulation of the poetic views formulation of poetic views what is he trying to talk about he's giving us he's giving us his views on poetry he's telling us about this new kind of poetry that is moving away from the new classical way of writing that is moving away from the new classical way of writing that is what is being discussed over here right this is something that we have to keep in mind this is something that we have to remember now poetry according to wordsworth poetry according to wordsworth is nothing but spontaneous overflow of powerful feelings of powerful feelings and these are emotions which are recollected in tranquility so he is definitely a poet who is putting a lot of emphasis on emotions who is saying that poetry is basically the spontaneous overflow of powerful emotions so for example when i'm sad or for example when i'm elated that is the time when the best kind of poetry can be produced according to wordsworth that will be the period according to wordsworth wherein i will be able to produce the best kind of poetry okay so that is of course there that is his entire definition of poetry and the poet is a common man the poet is not a bard the poet is not a bard earlier the poet was considered to be the bard like you know the the the, the bard was literally the person like a soothsayer telling you the future like an astrologer he was having an elevated position even philip sidney gives uh, like you know the poet an elevated position by calling him the maker philip sidney is also calling the poet the maker so clearly you are able to see that he is completely renouncing the elevated notions associated with the poet and what they are telling you yeah yes 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 absolutely seema khan that is also written by wordsworth and that is the that is where he's saying that you know he is a common man interacting with other men and he also says that a good poet is a good teacher so for wordsworth a poet is a teacher for wordsworth a poet is a common man speaking to other common men in common man's language about common man's theme so there is this entire democratic spirit that you can find in the poetry of william wordsworth there is a spirit of democratization there is a spirit of making sure that citizens are coming at the center there is this entire concept of making sure that how you can respect and value the freedom and independence of people right the freedom and independence of people the subject of poetry now this is also equally important the subject of poetry the subject of poetry when you are talking about the subject of poetry it was dealing with the incidents and situations from the common man's life incidents and situations that were coming from common man's life that is the subject of poetry that is the subject of poetry right he's telling us about humble rustic life humble rustic life right what is he discussing about he's discussing about humble rustic life the common folk the common man right so every subject that can interest the human mind every subject that can interest the human mind is actually important is actually important and is the subject of poetry according to wordsworth so colrad says okay subject fine he still talks about common people but in style he is not at all writing ordinary verse in style he is not at all writing ordinary verse he was asserting that ordinary things should be presented in an unusual aspect okay so he was talking about the supernatural aspect so he was saying like you know bring the ordinary things in a different manner bring the ordinary in an extraordinary fashion imagine you've gone to a museum where they've captured like you know common place or for example like you know there there's this very famous place in amritsar called the haveli um now the haveli i think they've created this entire pin punjab now why that that's very common that's very rustic but still like you know i think you have to pay somewhere around 1000 to 2000 rupees to like you know just travel across uh, the entire place which is designed like a punjabi village so that is literally telling you the fascination for the common man's life the fascination for common people or here also in ncr where you have like you know now i think because of corona virus they didn't do that but otherwise in february you have the suraj kund mela and even in the suraj kund 
Mela, they're promoting handicrafts and they have these, uh, like, you know, this village like setting designed so that people can come and people can ensure that, you know, they're enjoying that sort of a life, right? The style of poetry, the style of poetry, however, Wordsworth, even though he's preaching to write in common man's language, he's rejecting the neoclassical ways of writing, but his style of writing poetry is elevated. This is a problem that Coleridge has. This is a problem that Coleridge has. Coleridge has, he's not able to practice what he's preaching. He's not able to put in praxis, the praxis. Praxis is the practice. He's not able to practice what he's preaching. He's not able to walk the talk. Walk the talk. You know, the very famous story of Gandhiji, where uh, like this woman ha- goes to Gandhiji to say that, Gandhiji, please, my son has a lot of sweets. Can you please tell him not to have? Because he's ruining his teeth. So Gandhiji says, okay, fine, get him after a few days. And then after the few days, the mother comes with a child and Gandhiji says, okay, but you shouldn't have sugar or sugar related products. And the, and the child agrees. Now, after some days, the woman, these are stories in my experiments with truth. And you have got questions in paper one rather on both Nehru as well as on Gandhi. Uh, so they are, of course, important writers, right? And they're associated with Indian writings as well. So the woman says that, you know, Gandhiji, I'd come to you uh, some sometime back. But, you know, of course, now I'm very happy. My son has not, uh, he's abandoned having sweets. But why did you not tell him the same simple thing the first time? you had come so he said the first time when you met me i was myself addicted to sweets i I used to love sweets i was uh, i was having a sweet tooth so if i was telling the child to like you know abandon sweets that would have been like i'm not able to walk the talk and that is the reason i asked you to come after sometimes so that i renounced the practice of having sweets and then only i could ask my child ask your child not to have sweets right so he was wordsworth was not able to walk the talk wordsworth was not able to walk the talk he was telling us about writing in common man's language but he was not doing the same wordsworth views wordsworth views were very revolutionary he of course rejected the neoclassical way of writing he wanted to avoid gaudiness he wanted to avoid poetic diction okay he said that poetry should be written in the language of the common man poetry should be written in the real language the real language of common ordinary men the real language of common ordinary men that was what his style of writing was that is what he was worried about right so this was his entire plea now the poetic process according to wordsworth what was the poetic process there were four important stages in the poetic process you observe you go into the company you first observe everything then you go in the company of nature you recollect your things and then you try to mull over you try to contemplate and finally you produce finally you produce so for the very first time people like wordsworth were also trying to define the entire artistic plot process the poetic process so that people like you and me could also try our hands on writing poetry so that people like you and me could also try and writing like you know try attempting writing poetry so that is what was happening so the poetic process that we are talking about the poetic process here that we are talking about was related to observation it was related to observation okay observe the incidents that are taking place with a keen eye you have to be a keen observer you need to have a keen eye only then can you be a good writer so you know one of my students had actually done this that you know romanticism was never isolated from realism many a times we consider romanticism to be uh, like you know to be at loggerheads with realism but romanticism was actually the most realistic of all sorts of poetry that has come and that was what you know uh, her entire thesis was based on she had written this entire thesis trying to justify uh, by looking at the poetry of Blake by looking at the uh, like you know the romantic writers being realistic right so clearly we we think the common perception is that romanticism is against realism that is not the reality this is not the reality okay so this is something that you have to keep in mind this is something that you have to remember recollecting it contemplating it and finally the composition finally actually writing it And, you know, the company of nature becomes an inspiration, according to Wordsworth. The company of nature helps you to get a lot of inspiration. 
Now, this is exactly what we are talking about. Wordsworth was not able to implement. He was not able to implement the style of writing, right? He, of course, he, of course, confirmed to the theory when we are talking about the subject. That means the choice of people. He's talking about the solitary reaper. He's talking about ordinary people. But he was not able to confirm to the style of writing in common man's language, right? So that was, of course, there. That was, of course, there that, you know, his style of writing was definitely not ordinary was definitely not ordinary this is very important Matthew Arnold on, on William Wordsworth what does Matthew Arnold have to say about William Wordsworth Matthew Arnold was saying fine I agree that now we are criticizing Wordsworth he had got a lot of bad press in 1840 all thanks to people like Browning because Browning was like he's a lost leader he doesn't know anything Coleridge had already criticized him in Biographia Literaria in 1813 so by this time there was a lot of animosity also you know anything that is going up will also get a lot of criticism so he was getting a lot of criticism and that is where people like Matthew Arnold came to his defense people like Matthew Arnold said people like Matthew Arnold said that he will be one of the chief poets he is actually comparable to poets like Shakespeare and Milton He's saying, don't worry, don't like, you know, don't be so sad and so bad on him, even though his height of popularity had faded in the 1840s. But Arnold is, Arnold is saying that he is a person, right? Arnold is saying that he is a person who's still having a lot of credit, who's still having, sorry, who's still having a lot of merit right so clearly what we can see is that Arnold was a person who was saying that Wordsworth is capturing the reality through his shorter pieces trying to bring in new form of writing poetry he's actually a pioneer of sorts who's revolutionizing the entire tradition of poetry right so Arnold was definitely coming on to his defense this is a very common question that you get in your exam the borders is the only right Wordsworth completed completed his only play borders borders was the only important completed play especially for your teaching exams this is a direct question that you get especially for your teaching exams this is the direct question that you get which is suhu i will come on to your doubt wait a minute we will come on to your doubt don't worry okay let's just quickly complete this okay so here what you have to keep in mind is that borders is borders is one of the most important works that you are having it is a tragedy dealing with it is a tragedy that is dealing with your guilt crime punishment which, which is set during the regime or regime of henry the henry the third okay henry the third and you can clearly see that you know these romantic writers are definitely trying their hands on drama but they're not very successful dramatists they're of course trying their hands on drama but they're not very successful dramatists okay they're not at all successful they're not at all getting a lot of success at all okay now publication of the lyrical ballet is actually a very important moment because that is starting that is inaugurating the romantic age that is inaugurating the romantic age that is in a way telling us about the beginning of a new kind of movement beginning of a new kind of poetry that was to become popular for the next 40 years going forward okay so lyrical ballets the first edition this question is asked the first edition had come with an advertisement the first edition had come with an advertisement okay and they were telling you that these poems were trying to experiment these poems were trying to experiment with the language language of conversation they were trying to talk about the lives of the ordinary people they were trying to talk about like you know the proper uh, they were not going for tradition but they were going for proper experiences proper experiences right so that was of course a radical departure Tintern Abbey is another important work that you have when we are talking about Wordsworth lines composed a few miles above Tintern Abbey on revisiting the banks of the Wye during a tour in July 13 1798 this is the complete title has been asked in multiple exams and you must remember all right uh, revisiting the banks of the Wye revisiting the banks of the Wye during a tour okay uh, so here you have like you know a lot of things that are being said five years have passed since he last visited this location these are the opening lines right these are a few opening lines that you're having where he's trying to talk about how it has been over five years and he's coming to this place for spiritual uh, sustenance for recuperation for recuperation for recovery he's coming here for recuperation for recovery of his lost spirit so that he can come and he can contribute so that he 
he can come and he can contribute right uh, gurpreet closet drama is drama which is meant for reading drama which is meant for reading and not for performance is called closet drama drama meant for reading and not for performance becomes an example of closet drama okay and now he's telling you like you know imagine if you you are really uh, completely demotivated so you're going to meet someone uh, or a lot of times like you know some people like when you you'll become uh, a professor you would see a lot of times other professors are going for vipassana so why are they going for vipassana is to like you know just completely calm themselves uh, be a little more composed that's the same thing that's happening in tintern abbey okay it is also showing you the entire development of wordsworth's attitude towards nature right stage 1 the animal pleasures of childhood the animal pleasures of childhood right then you are considering nature to be wild and gloomy right there's this adolescent passion and finally there is this awareness that you are having there is this awareness that you are having that how nature is playing a vital role how nature is playing a vital role in giving you inspiration in inspiring you for your craft in giving you inspiration and inspiring you in your craft right so that is of course very important tintern abbey is like you know a very important work wherein you have got three stages that are described uh, so when you talk about mh abrahams mh abrahams has written this essay structure and style in the greater romantic lyric okay i'm coming up with this uh, with this marathon that will not be uh, this this weekend and probably not even next but one marathon and that will be like a proper marathon where we'll uh, complete it i will be doing one exhaustive coverage of mh abrahams okay so we will exhaustively look at mh abrahams in one go properly so that that video can also be an important source for you to just revise stuff okay so that is of course there as arena animal pleasure in the sense like you know for example uh, if you look at uh, like you know if if you look at uh, i i don't want to get this so if if you're looking at the table lamp okay if you're looking at this this musty table lamp what have i what have we done with this table lamp this table lamp is using wood this table lamp is using wood it is there for aesthetic pleasure right or uh, for example if i look around uh, if any of the bag is using uh, so this is like a leather product that you are having this is a leather product that you are having so the animal passion is just not the bodily desires the animal passion is also how we are exploiting nature the animal passion is also how we are exploiting nature completely how we are how we are uh, literally having this animalistic acquisitive spirit we just want to acquire things we just want to acquire things we are only and only worried about how we can acquire things that is the major cause that is the animalistic spirit that we are talking about just look around you you know unfortunately we are horrible people we we have forgotten how to reuse stuff we forgotten how to re uh, like you know recycle stuff we keep on like you know we keep on having these desires why do we want to earn because we have a desire so those are the things okay so that is of course there so he is telling you in structure and style in the greater romantic lyric he is telling you about the description of the scene which is there his analysis of the scene that you know it is actually the scene he's he, why wordsworth is going why wordsworth is going because he wants to recover because he wants to recover he wants to recover back right that is major important thing and abraham's term the greater romantic lyric the greater romantic lyric is actually telling you that you know there is a lot of there is a lot of correlation between the setting it's not that you know inorganically i'm sitting over there in nature in the company of nature and i'm talking about something nature is an intrinsic part of his life he is genuinely a person who is uh, trying to gain a lot of inspiration from nature right uh, abrahams inspired wordsworth no no mh abrahams is your critic who's looking back at the romantic period and commenting on the romantic period and he's telling you that there is an assimilation he's telling you that wordsworth's poetry is not a poetry that is written uh, like you know about nature because he wants to change the trend nature genuinely has a role to play nature is genuinely improving his sensibility nature is genuinely influencing him nature is genuinely in influencing him that is what he's talking about okay so that is of course there and even coldridge's conversation poems he says you know what what is there there is no artificiality 
there is no artificiality that is what the romantic poetry is all about it's very organic it is very organic what do we mean by organic organic is we have not given any artificial output if a plant has grown it has grown on its own the plant has grown the plant has grown on its own that is what we are talking about right he is also going to germany and in germany we can see that you know that is where words were dorothy coleridge they travel to germany in the autumn of 1798 the day after lyrical ballet was published coleridge as it is was vastly influenced by his uh, german colleagues by the german writings that is of course very inspiring okay uh, they parted ways and coleridge traveled to the university town learning german language and coming under the profound influence of german romantics this is a question that is directly asked in your uh, teaching exams that coleridge was inspired by german philosophy imagine you're going with your friends and you know it's just like if you've seen that movie dil chahta hai what happens in dil chahta hai uh, saif ali khan stays back he stays back but he's mugged that's a se separate thing but you know he stays back so uh, you know the fact that coleridge is saying no i've come to germany but i am not coming along with you you guys can go and carry on i will stay back over here because i want to explore more i want to explore more right wordsworth lived in the town of gosler they were suffering from suffering in homesickness and from a particularly harsh winter right uh, here wordsworth was writing some of the lucy poems right uh, and began writing the prelude also in the harsh winters so you know all the poetry that you will see with these romantic poets are very organic very attached to, the, to their lives very attached to the uh, and this is something that will continue even with tennyson even with tennyson the greatest piece of tennyson in memoriam is coming from a personal experience and that is the reason queen victoria is also praising it because she can connect with that personal uh, demise of a dear person a dear departed okay now uh, what i will do is i will share today the entire pdf there are other slides also just go over those slides there is a slide on prelude there are other aspects so also just go over the slides okay and what we will do is tomorrow we will of course continue but we will continue with a romantic period okay so just take a look at wordsworth and i will send certain audios also maybe on the telegram channel so that you can cover your uh, wordsworth properly okay all right on that note we will end today's class if there are any if there are any doubts that have gone unso unsolved please put that uh, in the grade up doubt platform just come on the grade up studio platform and uh, use the grade up doubt platform Form to address your doubt so that i'll be able to clarify your doubt okay all right so i will end over here i'm really sorry if some of your and students over here sushil um Preeti, uh, Kuhu, any doubts that you that you are having, please very quickly use the Grade Up Studio platform and do let me know. I will see you guys in the eight pm class, and all of you, I will see you tomorrow. Be prepared, and I will share the schedule also for the upcoming sessions. All right, take good care of yourself. God bless. Bye.